Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the Pre-Game Show Network. Tyler Carr, Uncle Neely in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, Neely, Coach, Coach Prom has one, one of many things that he likes to say is, I got time today. And when he has time today, that, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> I don't think it was such a great thing today uh, because on Twitter, uh, Shadur Sanders had to clap back a little bit last night. Uh, there was an article out, maybe you guys saw it, where, where they caught up with all the people who were there at Colorado and didn't make the first cut, who were advised to enter the portal. They, they never got to play for, for Coach Sanders. They, they were part of the, I guess, the one in 10 team and just didn't make it. Uh, and so look, there's a lot of feelings out there. There was a young man interviewed and he talked about how he didn't get his shot and his feelings were hurt and he was upset and he was crying. And so now nearly there's this big thing where people are stat checking and, you know, there's a whole lot going on online. Uh, and, and coach prime is went back and forth with somebody and, and it boils down to this. Uh, well, he didn't go back and forth. He said what he said. <laughs> When you come for Deion Sanders, Shadur Sanders is going to stand up for his daddy and his daddy is going to have his sons back. Uh, Neely, I, I don't like to get into all the, if you're online, you can see it, you can read it for yourself. Uh, but in this environment, is this uh, a part of just what it's going to be? Is, is it fair game? Uh, we've talked about this on other shows before. Uh this is news out there 24 seven. You look, you can make money by saying everything that's wrong with Colorado. You can become popular and famous by saying everything that's right with Colorado. It is a, an economy within itself because of coach Sanders. And there's going to be a lot of content that comes along uh, with that. Is, is this just how it is, man? This is how it is. And this is how it should be. Uh, I personally believe that when Deion Sanders says, I got time today, either what came before it or what comes after it is going to be pure gold. And whether you disagree with what comes before it or after it, you cannot diminish or dismiss that he has the right to say it. Sometimes people get in these, these uh, Twitter spaces, X spaces, social media spaces, and they think they can say what they want to say about somebody. And because of the other person's uh, stature in life, that they shouldn't respond or they're not going to respond. Well, sometimes when Deion Sanders, a.k.a. Coach Prime, is scrolling on Instagram or scrolling on, on X, formerly known as Twitter, he sees something and he looks at his watch and he got time, he's going to respond and he's going to let you know he got time today. Uh, I am sure that there are people in Madison Avenue or public relations spaces that, you know, bristle when he does it and wish that he wouldn't, but the man has the right to to say it, and he will say it. So come for him if you want to. But when you hear the words, I got time today, you better duck. You know, Neil, I, I just feel bad for the people uh, because it, it's a heavy hand. If, if you get that clap back uh, from anybody in the, in the Sanders family, it is a heavy hand, but you asked for it. If you if you're gonna if you're gonna let your fingers do the typing, now now you ask for it. I, I personally, you know, I can't put my uh, you know, the way I would handle things onto other people because people do have the right. I I, I look at it like, look, these people, I never heard of them until the clap back, and I'll probably forget their name like like 30 seconds later. And and I just feel bad for people when they get the head smashed like that. But if, if you ask for it, you, you ask for it. Um, but Neely, I, I don't understand. I don't understand the position of, Hey man, your son's not a top five pick. He ain't got no arm. He's not athletic. I'm like, that's, that's the, that's the ammunition you bought. Well, those, those are blanks. Uh, those, those are not even firecrackers. They don't, that's not even making noise. You just use it. You, you brought a, a toy gun to a, to an M16 fight. That's what you're bringing because everybody knows Shadur Sanders arm is talented quarterback. Everybody knows he's going to be a first round uh, draft pick next year, uh, depending on which team and where they fall uh, could easily be top five, if not number one pick. Uh, these are not things that are really up for a lot of debate. It is what it is. He's proven he is who he is. And just like people, uh, who have gro grown up relationships with their family members. You come for a family member, I'm going to come back at you. 
provided I got time. Because one thing I'll say about Shadur Sanders, uh, he doesn't really fool around in the social media space that much. Uh, there's certain days of the week that he might check his DMs or certain days of the week he might do a post. But when he's locked in and working out in practice to get ready to game, he rarely, you know, does have time for it. I think, Tommy, one thing that we got to examine about this uh, is, is what started it all, what kicked it off, and you led into it. And that was this article by The Athletic, I think it was, uh, an article that's really about a year late, uh, an article that as much as it could have focused on the scholarship just recently granted to Charlie Offerdahl, uh, could have focused on Jordan Seaton signing the experienced offensive linemen that are coming here, D-linemen, uh, could focus on Tyler Brown uh, not having to deal with a waiver issue and graduating from Colorado uh, in a few days. Didn't focus on any of that. Uh, talked to disgruntled players from a 1-11 and team about how they felt they were treated. And one thing I can tell you about how they were treated, Tyler, they were all given the opportunity to perform. Yes, the position coaches or the coach prime suggest to players, this may not be the best place for you. True. He told you he was going to do that. But those who chose to stay, they got just as many reps and opportunity to prove that they should and could be here on this team. Uh, Charlie Offerdahl made the roster. Uh, ben, ben made the roster, you know, uh, plays cornerback safety. These guys were there when Coach Prime got there. They toughed it out and proved they had what it takes. Uh, so when you put an article out that's a year late, uh, that's clearly a hatchet job in my mind, you know, just a, a hit piece. Uh, and players now who've been there a year get to see. I saw Cameron Silver Craig respond like, man, it's nothing like that. You get all the reps and opportunity you want to in this program. And if that doesn't measure up, then you should find someone else to play. And anyone who wants to cry about that, man, I can remember the words of my late grandmother. Tough titty, but it's all mama got. I have not heard tough titty in a long time. That that is a good that is a good throwback. That, that, that is a lost phrase in our vernacular. Tough titty. Uh that's all she yeah. got though. What you what you gonna do with? <laughs> we gonna, gonna cry about? It? Go to Neely. Neely, we discussed this, uh, or we just kind of threw it out. We really did not go in depth uh, with it a couple of weeks ago. I want to. I want to circle back to this. When you get professional compensation, does that automatically equate to you having professional responsibilities, professional accountability? Uh, and professional standards in your workplace, or do you get to get big money and still be a kid and get treated with kid gloves? There's a balance to it. Uh, if we're talking about, say, name, image, and likeness and what the collectors are out there doing, the NCAA has, has clearly stated over and over, there is no pay for play. If you sign a deal with these young people to represent you and they fumble the ball or don't throw a touchdown or throw an interception, that has nothing to do uh, with the payment plan that you set up for them. Uh, on the other hand, when you look in the real world, uh, Tali, there are plenty of people who get paid for things and don't do a damn good job of what they get paid for. But you just hope the free marketplace and capitalism you know, catches up with it. Uh, I think in this space of college football, these young people are going to have to grow up fast or faster and learn that with NIL, with collective money, with performance coming in, you know, there are going to be people to cheer you and boo you and they're going to be booing you harder if you're out there, you know, representing the brand and you're not performing to the level that they think you should. That's just part of life. That's that's all fair. You know, I I remember uh, my 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 athletic career was about that about that short, <laughs> and it, and it was a rough relationship with with high school basketball. And I can remember my coach and, and look. I loved the man to death. I, I saw him for the first time in uh, 20, 30 years last year. And he was still talking crap, <laughs> like still giving me a hard time. And I'm like, that's just who he is. Uh, but I can remember uh, being uh, frustrated, humiliated, uh, upset. But at the end, of the end of the day, it was because I didn't put forth the effort. Like, I like basketball. I didn't love it. I liked it. I like being on the team. I like hanging around. I like the idea of being a basketball player, but I wasn't in love with it like the players who succeeded. Uh, and I didn't put the work in. And 
coach saw that and that's what pissed him off and that's what caused him to, to stay on my butt which is life uh but the thing i took away from that was not oh my god he hurt my feelings through the way he delivered the message it was you know when whenever it is young tolly you grow up to figure out what your gift is don't ever be lazy with it because you're going to have that same feeling of not achieving what you could have achieved and so it's just something that kind of drove me into the area i needed to be which was not basketball. <laughs> uh, when did we get to this point, Neely, where where feelings mattered so much? I mean, I know I sound like an old Republican. <laughs> Jeez, like I know feelings matter, Neely. I know they matter, but man, if you protect everybody's feelings on every single thing, like what are we ever going to accomplish in life? You're not going to accomplish much at all. Uh, feelings do matter. Feelings do have a place. Uh, there is a way, you know, for messages to be delivered. Uh, but there are also some spaces when the clock is ticking and we're working against time constraints that you don't have time to worry about somebody's feelings as much as you do need to worry about articulating the message in a concise way that is understood clearly. Uh, so I think there, therein lies the rub. College football is a working calendar. It is constantly moving. The date is always working against you. The sand is always going through the hourglass, whatever analogy you want to draw up. Uh, and there's this thing that you mentioned that you didn't mention. I'm sorry, Tyler. You talk about effort. You talk about love. Those things are important. But you know what's more important? That's damn talent. And just because you were talented enough to play for one coach doesn't mean you're talented enough to play for another. So if you were on a 1-11 and team and you were good enough to be on that team, that doesn't mean you're good enough to be on a new team head coached by a Hall of Famer, head coached by a two-time back-to-back undefeated in his conference, two-time coach of the year from the SWAC. The standard is different. And no matter how much you work, just maybe you weren't talented enough to be at his standard where he wants his team to be. And that's okay. That's why the portal exists, because maybe there's another school that what you bring to the table fits them perfectly. But hey, Tali, for guys to think that you could be on this 1-11 team this time of year, going to just roll right into this new regime. That's just far-fetched and not realistic thinking. That happens in corporate America when you switch CEOs or the C-suite makes changes. It happens in, in any sport in college basketball when a new head coach comes in. Uh, I don't care the sport or, or the gender. This is just part of it. Coaches want to assemble a team they can win with. And if you're a part of the losing culture, it's even more difficult for you to stick around. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, well said there, Neely. Uh, I, I'm just, it, it's crazy the expectations uh, and 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 the parameters. Like, <laughs> it's like the standard for Deion Sanders is you got to win every game or, or you can't coach. But then there's also this like, <laughs> there's like this talk over there like, well, you got to keep everybody and you got to be nice to them and you got to consider everybody. Like, those things don't go together. And there, there's no sport, uh, no level of performance where you see those things go together. It, it's crazy town out there. If you walk into any football field in America, if you walk into any gymnasium in America, I don't care if it's the church little league on weekends. If you look to one of those corners of the building, you see a scoreboard. That means it matters. Because the score is being kept, and to score is being kept, that means who wins and loses matters. And as long as who wins and loses matters, as long as there's a scoreboard to track it, that means every coach is going to do what it takes to assemble his or her team with the best possible talent to get the most favorable outcome they can on the scoreboard. Now, if we want to go around America and start taking down scoreboards, then we can have the feelings of conversation hug and sing kumbaya and not even track the points. But as long as we're tracking points, that means winners matter. And as long as winning matters, that means winners matter on your team. You know, one of the newer things in college football is, is what we are doing right here. Uh, access to programs, daily YouTube content. Uh, although we've been, you know, doing this for, for three years in, in different capacities, you know, people weren't doing this 10 years ago. It, it's still a relatively new phenomenon. Uh, what, what is fair game for people who keep the record 
you you are keeping the record of what Deion Sanders does. Deion Sanders does on a day to day basis from Jackson State to Colorado. Uh, people are looking to you for information. Uh, they're looking to you for context so they can feel like, hey, I know what's going on too. Uh, what is fair game, uh, Neely? I know last week it, it feels like a month ago, people were like, oh, Neely's keeping receipts. He shouldn't have said that. He shouldn't have did this. Um, but when you are keeping the record and you got to let people know like what's happening, what what do you feel like is is fair game from, from your standpoint? I think it's all fair game talk. Uh, but I will add this caveat to it. I think the game has to be uh, kind and fair when we're dealing with young people. And when Neely set the record straight, me being Neely, a couple of weeks ago, that was only done after arrows were shot at the program and the head coach to paint a picture as if we were doing something nefarious. Uh, so it is never my intent to disparage a young person or divulge their shortcomings. Uh, I think the world needs more second chances. I think the world needs to promote where people you know, can get in environments that are suitable to them and their success. But having said that, you know, that means you need to walk up right and walk out the door right. If you walk out the door and throw a grenade back in the room, don't think that we're not going to dive on the grenade and cover it and then throw one back ourselves. That's just how the law of the universe is, man. That's, that's just the way it is. Uh, so I believe in record keeping. I believe in fact checking. Uh, and I don't have any problem personally being held accountable in that regard. If I say something on the show, and then two weeks later is wrong. Somebody has the right to point it out. And they do. They do all the time. And it's okay. I don't take it personal. I'm a, I'm a big boy. Uh, but if, if you're thinking that just because you're a young person or on the team that a program doesn't have the right to defend itself against your charges, that's just not how the real world works, Tali. Uh, one thing about Coach Prime's programs, uh, you know, there are cameras around. Uh, in each meeting, we're documenting things. And not to keep receipts, we're doing it to tell the story. And so just as much as, like Coach Prime always says, just as much as it shows your highlights, it's going to also show your blemishes. So you have to be careful about the blemishes you show. So when we show a room for team meeting day and you're not in it, we didn't do a story that you didn't that you missed the meeting. We were doing a story on everybody else that made the meeting. It just stood out because you weren't sitting there. But the record is the record. All is fair. You know, none of this is done to harm anybody. Uh, but it is done in the name of truth and to make sure people understand the total picture. And, and I have seen that on a couple of different occasions, uh, even from the media side where people have, you know, come out with content. Deion Sanders said this, did this. Uh, and then there's the tape. <laughs> then Absolutely. there's the tape. Uh, so well, whatever it is that you say, whatever, you know, hill it is that, that you're going to die on, please make sure you're right. Because, boy, if you're wrong, uh, the, the evidence will be very loud uh, in response. And, and I tell you this, Tyler, one thing I pride myself on, uh, even in the partnership that I've done with you or other things, is I don't fear being wrong. Uh, I don't fear being criticized. I don't fear being attacked. Uh, you know, I do my best to my ability uh, to tell the truth. Uh, and and make sure that from the vantage point that I see things is reported on accurately. And if that rubs somebody the wrong way, you know, just so be it. Uh, I can't alter the truth. I can't sugarcoat the facts. I tell people all the time, you're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. And we we report the facts, and then you and I will have editorial conversations like this about those facts. And so when people get in the comments and they disagree with me or vehemently disagree with me, it doesn't change my opinion. Just keep in mind, you got to remember. I was there. I was in the room. You weren't. And, folks, if Neely knows this much, what you hear on the pregame show is about, uh, how, how far will we go? You know this much, Neely. T tell me when to stop is, is what you tell people. Come on. Come on now. About right there. And here's what I also say about the other media outlets. Uh, reach to people with Darius Sanders. Uh, well off media uh, with Deion Sanders Jr. You watch a 20-minute clip from a 24-hour day. Just put that in perspective. You're watching about 20 minutes out of a 24-hour day. No one is capable or even willing to show it all, but we do see it all. And then people want to challenge what we're, the story that we're telling 
And I say, man, oh, I, I guess I didn't see you sitting next to me in the room because uh, <laughs> what, what did you see? <laughs> since, since you were clearly there. Yeah. I, I you know, told me a couple of weeks ago, I was in a meeting. I was a fly on the wall. I was not participating in the meeting. I was in a meeting with Coach Prime, Deion Sanders. His chief of staff, David Kelly, came in for a meeting. I was not asked to leave. I just sat there on the couch while they met. Some of the things from the meeting I could report, I reported on them. And I had people in the comments saying, ain't no way that happened. The man is there, people. <laughs> Neely is there. You may not see him because he's on the other side of the lens documenting what you do see, but he is there and he knows. And I don't even, whatever you know, whatever he tells us, that's about as much as I know because I don't even ask Neely. Ne Neely, do I ever ask you like, hey man, give, give, me, the, give me the scoop. Give me the, I, I try to keep the fan's perspective so I can ask you legitimate questions. I don't, I don't know there, what's going on. I mean, you nailed it. That's, that's exactly what takes place. So uh, behind the scenes there <laughs> with Neely Knows. I'm telling you, we got this segment. We got to figure out how to execute it. Neely Knows. Is, Let's do is it. What, you know, I, I remember Tali growing up and watching old war movies. Uh, and they had those embedded journalists mm -hmm. who were reporting back from the front lines. Tali, you know they weren't reporting every damn Oh, no. But they were there. That's it, boys and girls. Uh, that's how the sausage is made. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us right here, the pregame show network. Make sure you subscribe, get those notifications uh, whenever we drop content because it is always coming right here on the pregame show network for Uncle Neely burning up there in Jack. Mississippi is burning right in, <laughs> right in Neely's crib. I'm Tyler Carr in Atlanta. We'll talk to you a little later.